Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about John's Bow NAS systems and hopefully by the end of this video help you decide which one of the John's Bow N2, N3 and N4 best deserves you and your data. If you've been in the market to build your own NAS from scratch and you've got your motherboard and your CPU and your network interfaces all agreed upon, chances are you're looking for something to put it inside and I think it would be fairly safe to say that of all the brands that have made a name for themselves in recent years when it comes to network attached storage cases, John's Bow have really pushed ahead of a lot of them out there and since the release of the N1 2 bay, the N2 5 bay, the N3 8 bay and now the N4 sort of 6 8 bay um, I think a lot of you are still on the fence about which one you should go for and hopefully by the end of this video I'll help you decide but without further ado let's change things up here on the table and move ourselves the N2 up there because I'll be honest presenting this with that in front of me it was always going to be tough Let's go through all the different ways in which these systems are different. Number one. So let's be honest, you're looking at it, you're thinking about the old bunts, aren't you? And I'll say right now, it may come as absolutely no surprise that the oldest one of the three here on the table, needless to say, the N2, is the one that's the best price right now. Not rocking out the gate at around about, on average, when you look at different uh, resellers on both Amazon and AliExpress, for about $75, $76. Now, the N3, the one that was released uh, mid to early in 2023, this is probably the most expensive of the three currently, at around about $99. I say $99 because in some places on Amazon, you're looking at that price tag about $150, $170, and on AliExpress a little lower than that. So I just thought I'd split the difference and go down around about the 100 nicker mark. And finally, the brand new N4, rocking out the gate at about $80 to $90 right now. But for those of you that have ever looked up these devices online, you know that that price isn't exactly cut and dry. And the majority of these systems are shipped directly out from China. And with that, in most places, you either have a 50 quid, give or take, delivery price there, or it's rolled in. That's why the price on these three systems is so darn difficult to nail down. But needless to say, if you're on a budget, the N2 is by far the more affordable of the three. Of course, it's not about what the price tag is, it's about what you get for your money. And when it comes to these three devices, I would say the design choices that have gone between the three of them, at least in terms of architecturally and indeed the aesthetics, have all gone slightly different ways. Once again, we'll start off with the N2. The, the N2 is the more compact of the three. It is a five 3.5 inch storage drive system and one 2.5 inch traditionally SSD based system there. Uh, and it has ventilation on practically every single side. It has uh, on the rear uh, for active fan on the rear for the main five storage uh, bays on a back plane there. However, the rear of the system does not feature any means to add additional fans there. It's all passive cooling there, and there's no means, there's no uh, holes there for maybe like an 80 or 100 or 120 mil fan there on the rear. That single fan is all you get. Now, we move over to the N3, and the N3 arrives on the other hand with a great deal more ventilation, but also a great deal more active cooling both at the beginning and optionally arriving with two 100 mil fans based there on the rear this system also has screw holes for an additional two more uh, i believe 80 to 100 mil fans to be mounted behind the motherboard compartment also this is the only system of the three that not only has the ventilation there for the drive media on the front but also additional ventilation based there on the front allowing airflow to pass directly through the system consistently more against all three devices there now that brings us to arguably the best looking of the three you know what i'm saying and this one uh, arrives with not only that front mounted mesh panel but also at the top a real wood uh, panel there at the top on the rear it has only a single 120 mil fan and unfortunately no means to mount further fans there so regardless of the fact that the um, n4 is looking like the biggest one of the three volumetrically cl very close to the n3 a little bit of crossover between it has only a single cooling fan there so in terms of architectural design and physical size Definitely the N4 is the best looking of the three, in my opinion, but the N2 is by far the smallest in terms of physical footprint. The N3 is massive compared to the three. It's also the oddest, weirdest, tallest device all the way through. 
And um, I would argue between all of them, the one that's going to keep your hardware inside the coolest by a country mile is going to be the N3. Not just because of the ventilation there on the front of the two fans, but also the potential to add more active ventilation down the line. And now on to storage. And I'll say right now, we're definitely seeing some weird conflux of the whole N4 thing. I mentioned this in its own review, but we'll get around to it in just a moment. All three of them are, have this removable front panel, and all three of them use those absolutely ghastly, awful, annoying rubber clip things that go onto the drives. Thanks, John's Spo. Absolutely hate those. But moving on, um, we've got those five storage bays there on the N2, each one of them using those rubber grommets and rubber pull handle thing that I despise. And also inside, there is a 2.5 inch cavity for a 2.5 inch ssd predominantly to go inside again slight side note john's bow seriously everyone's moved away from these you know, no one wants them they want to use m2 nvmes and i get it you can't put slots for those inside these will go directly onto the mobile or on a pcie card i get that but no one really uses these anymore what people want to use is big three and a half inch hard drives for economical large capacity storage and they want to use m2 nvme for smaller capacity faster performance storage these are slowly being phased out i'm really sorry but my petulance aside when we move over to the n3 the n3 has got eight 3.5 inch storage bays again rubber handles rubber little grommet things around the edge and also has an additional uh 2.5 inch sata slot inside here to mount a drive loosely with the cables you can actually fit a second drive inside if you're quite economical with the space but they don't really advertise that too much and finally we look at the new n4 which is weird this one arrives with six 3.5 inch SATA drives uh, space inside there and also two immediate slot in 2.5 inch SATA storage bays inside here. So that's why I mean about it being a, a quasi six eight bay because these two for the 2.5 inch SATA drives, they are inside the chassis. This one provides it on the outside. However, this system only provides traditional hot swap on these four bays here inside there's a back plane located at the back where drives are deliver uh, directly being fed into a combined sata uh, sas uh, power and data connector mounted on a backboard inside with in multiple uh, sata connections at the rear that funnel into the motherboard these have got that as well but the weird thing is because it's only on those four, and these four require loose SATA cables and loose SATA power for each of those individual hard drives and SSDs, it means those drives there being non-hot swap supported is a weird way to have your storage. Either give me them all hot swap, or give me all of the hard drives hot swap, and the SSDs not so. Don't give me this 50-50 split, it's super annoying. And for the size of this uh, case, most 8 bay storage systems I've looked at that support both MATX and ITX, more on that later on, are about the same size as this. They've gone for the right size chassis and a weird confluence of drives there. Ultimately, between the two of them, I mean, between the three of them, unsurprisingly, this gives you the most storage. This gives you those eight drives in there and two potential ssds inside this gives you the least but this gives you the stranger so it really goes first and joint for second there now how much you can cram inside these systems is going to make a big difference towards the pure storage power and efficiency potential for you and your network attached storage tasks whether it is you're going for simple backups going into multimedia with something like plex or going johnny big bananas for virtualization container management and deploying some seriously high-end hypervisors or proxmox and more different systems are going to give you a different scope of expandability and these three systems have gone very different ways in a number of those factors so straight away starting again with the n2 the n2 there has got a half height area for our MOBO deployment. It utilizes only the support of MITX motherboards there. So that's MITX motherboards like this one. And MITX motherboards predominantly have only got one PCIe slot with some modified custom ones that have got two PCIe slots there. But again, it's a physical limitation. That's something you really need to work with or start using riser boards. But it does mean you are gonna have to utilize half depth CPU coolers when installing them inside these systems there. That opens up the door by the way not only to half height cpu coolers but also 
Halfway PCIe cards. You're not going to be able to utilize PCIe cards. They're a little bit too tall inside the N2. You're only going to be able to utilize half depth cards. So if you were looking at graphics cards or particularly powerful storage upgrade cards, they're simply not going to fit inside this system. They're too tall, they're too long, you're not going to be able to use them there. So if you were looking at high end graphics card use for AI processes, maybe for video editing or a high end VM to access remotely, this is not going to facilitate that at all now move over to the n3 it's a completely different kettle of fish the n3 not only supports taller pcie slots uh, pcie cards with two individual bays there so you can use lovely thick graphics cards inside this system but also because of the height of that extra chassis there you're not just limited to half height cpu coolers you can go nuts you can use real highfalutin ones and if you're looking at even you know soc processors like the intel core ones we've been talking about recently and the amd embedded risons you're still going to need good coolers for good processors and this system allowing comprehensive and more powerful coolers is going to result in a better system operational temperature and ultimately that in conjunction with all the extra cooling ventilation and more on this system makes it great in terms of its overall capacity and upgradability and scalability long term now we look at our final entry there the n4 and once again <clears throat> the n4 gives me a headache because the n4 you can see one two three four pci uh, upgrade slots here that's all right four why is that because this is the only one of the three that not only supports MITX but also supports M80X. MITX cards, which have got multiple PCIe slots that include more DIMM slots traditionally for memory upgrades and also give you a greater scope for the CPUs that you can install. More powerful CPUs, more capable CPUs, more lanes, higher frequency, more graphics, madness, madness. And they give you all of that and then it's half height. So that means you're limited to half height coolers you're limited to half height PCIe cards. You can't use your big card. You can't use your big CPU cooler there. You're limited to all the half height stuff there, which is a real shame when you're looking at MATX deployments there. And especially when you remember that this only has six traditional hard drive slots and two SATA um, SSD slots there. It's just a weird mixture of scalability but clipped wings left right and center ultimately it won't come as any surprise that in terms of uh, motherboard deployment and scalability the n3 wins the majority of these i just wish they instead of made this i wish they'd made the n3 a bit wider just a bit wider and that would allow you much like the fractal node 804 to allow larger motherboards from atx support and allow more pcie slots and those bigger pcie cards as well and the big cooler to facilitate larger cpus Ultimately, it won't come as a big surprise that between the three, the one that gets my attention is the N3. Yes, it's the biggest. Yes, it's the most expensive. Yes, it has the potential to make more noise when it's in operation and take up much more space. But at the same time, it has greater power and expandability uh, potential there and better cooling, both at passive and active uh, for, or on the system and more room to scale up and upgrade a lot of those services as well the n2 on the other hand the n2 is for those of you that want a more compact nas experience that are just looking for something to set up and forget low impact low noise low price point i might add but just keep in mind that it's got the lowest storage potential of the three and PCIe, upgrade, uh, PCIe upgradability is also limited somewhat as well. And the N4, which I, you know, behind the scenes of this video, keep referring to the N2.5, you know, it's got the best MOBO support there with the MITX and M80X there. So scalability towards a lot of the components is a little bit broader. Also, it's the best looking of the three. Let's be realistic. Not just because it's wooden, but because it's a nice shape and they've rounded off a lot of the edges and it ends up being the product of more development over the years when it was released. But with middling storage uh, potential there and clipped wings in terms of PCIe, CPU, cooler support and more. It just doesn't make it perfect as an 8-bay. I will always like the N3 the most out of these three, but I have to accept that there are different kinds of use case scenarios where one of these threes will be the most appropriate. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you've already bought one, maybe you're on the fence and this video has helped you. Let me know which one of these three rocks your boat the most. Apart from that, there is an article in the description going through even more details and close-up shots and more 
on the comparison of these three i recommend you check that out as well as individual reviews that we've made on all three of these cases linked in the description also there are links towards amazon and aliexpress we can get hold of these and if you were going to go to those shops anyway please use those links it results in a small fee returning to me and eddie here at nascom it's just us it costs you nothing extra and it lets us continue doing what we do but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time